And I think that it's good to cool down and go with, with a DFI, which, which really gives you the runway. Uh, that's just a loan. It gives you the runway. It doesn't create tensions in the board. And, and it, gives you the, yeah, it gives you the opportunity to go to the next stage. So you, you need in a toolkit, you know, you need, you need to have sometimes the, the, the rescue, uh, the rescue uh, thing, you know, that you need to The have, emergency button. Yeah, the emergency button. Yeah. And, and again, it's all to, it all has to do with respect. Respect of the entrepreneur and respect of the, of the, of the investor. And, and that, to me, is what shapes the, um, the access to the various uh, kits, together with the competencies, of course, of the, of the various actors. Johnny, turning back to your side, can you uh, envision a scenario where you will just continue a self-financed uh, model and you know, the haircut might be too expensive and you might not find that perfect tool for yeah, your toolkit. This is, you know, this is, this is maybe, part maybe you're in no hurry, so you know, who cares? No, this is part of being an engineer, okay? So <laughs> you plan for your backup plan yeah, okay, in case great. of things don't, uh, don't go the way you want to, you, you'd like to go, okay? So it's, uh, you can't stop really to uh, your operation, okay? So it's a backup plan, could okay? also be the project financing, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, keen technology and uh, aggressively uh, tackling, addressing the market, okay, Spe uh, key specific customers, creating the, uh, the demand of your technology through um, a smaller part of investments so or pilot project, proof of concept, okay, and when you get the project, okay, and then you can get the money, okay, mm -hmm. for project financing, okay, and that's where, okay, you can also finance your company to the group, okay, it's, uh, that's, the, that's our backup plan, which is not necessarily uh, to be triggered, okay, as a backup in case of we don't go through uh, investor and raising of capital, it could be part of them. Sure, that's, uh, that's the way you plan. Sure, sure. So, uh, back to you, it's something you had mentioned that you know one of the values that that you had through the experience was the strength of kind of uh, management expertise uh, that they were bringing to your organization. Um, I think that probably has some pros and cons. Uh, maybe sometimes that's very helpful to have all this management attention, and some other times maybe. Uh, too much attention, stay out of my business. What, what, what was that like for you? Was that a, a good balance? Were there times where maybe you felt they didn't give you enough attention, or was it the opposite that there were times where you know, just let me run my business, I'll, I'll bring you the numbers, um, call me in a quarter type of uh, feeling? Yeah, I guess that if you if you get somebody involved in helping you out, and when things start to turn better, then probably you need them less. But that's also what's happening. So, yeah, at, at time, but that's a bit. It's a bit more um, anecdotic, if you want. It's not the general trend is just a very good support. That's the that's the lesson. I mean, if you want to start a business, I mean, I would definitely do it with the private equity that I would uh, that I would choose. I mean, another another thing that we gain from that private equity is is you know access to the LPs. Uh, one of the LP of of Allo, uh, is a very very respected German industrialist, a family office, and he's investing uh, in the second round that we're doing now. Uh, a very large amount of, uh, of money. Yeah? So you have access to a network in addition to access to competencies. What I do regret with private equity, uh, honestly, and I'll be a bit provocative here, but that sometimes, you know, a kind of lack of appetite, be it from, from seed to, you know, series B or, or growth, uh, it's difficult to uh, sometimes to find a private equity that is really, you know, playing the role of the private equity, so taking some risks. Uh, it seems that, you know, you always have to, uh, you always have to be a, uh, healthy to have, you know, good revenues, of course, but certainly a good EBITDA. Uh, you need to have a good management, you need to have a good of everything. And to be very, very frank, then, you know, I'm, I'm just wondering uh, why, why should I not do it myself, you know, to take the point that it was just made, you know, and go to the bank. Huh? Uh, so I, I lack, I, I have risked a lot of things. You know, I was a director of the European Commission, I had a very fat salary, you know, no tax. I was in Budapest and it was really great. And from one day to the other, I, I made a jump and I went to Nashik, which is a holy city, a village at the, Indo at the Indian scale, three million people, no French people there. Uh, I'm the only one with my wife. And you know, this is, this is really, you know, a kind of commitment. You know, you do it or you don't do it. Now, I, I expect a little bit the same from the private equity guys. You know, I mean, if you, if you want to make a 2x, 3x, 4x, 10x, then guys, uh, you know, uh, wet your shirt. Huh? Uh, I, and, and I must say that I was not always particularly impressed by by the private equity guys, I must say that. Yeah, I mean, just to put a bit of life in this discussion, because you know, it's we are all starting to sleep otherwise, huh? Well, maybe this is some uh, good time for some questions from the audience <laughs> at this point. We can, maybe we'll take a pause. Are there are there questions or comments uh, based on kind of some, you know, feet on the ground examples here? Uh, any any feedback or, or, or comments from the, the audience, or is this what or is this what you would expect from your 
your customers and your, your clientele? Uh, given your background of working with outside investors, non-management owners, what would your words of wisdom be in terms of best practices you'd like to see your private equity guys follow? And how, how would you like them to be working on innovation, helping you with financial controls, marketing, sales? Would you like us just to stay out of it? Or would you, you know, what, what are the, I mean, we, we love getting our fingers dirty and our pants dirty and then leaving. The first one is that I, I don't think that you can innovate everywhere. So to my private equity, one of the things, you know, being non, uh, non-financial guy, what I'm really asking is that we keep things very simple and things be investment structure. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, necessity requires sometimes that you become creative in terms of, of, of structure, but then you get, you get really entangled. It's in very, very, very difficult. And that, that does have consequences for the future, you know. So that's, that's the, the first thing. Simplicity. And the other thing is really uh, an association at the strategic level, defining the framework, but no, uh, no, no micromanagement. Leave that to the management team. This would be the, the two things that I, uh, that I would like to. Would you be surprised? I mean, I, I think you invest because you, you expect some things, right? I mean, so, so, so I mean, you agree on the, um, on the, um, on, on the objectives. You then usually get a board seat, and I think that. What I expect then from private equity on the board is that he or she will actually bring to the board an, an, a competency and expertise that was maybe not present, if you want. But indeed, the agreement is, is a front, yeah? My dream investor, our dream investor in the companies that the investors that put the money is considering share or vision that the money is not the raw material that needs to be transformed. It has the brain power, intelligence, the creativity, the people, the office, the vision, okay, and the money. All these ingredients, okay, then make success, okay, and whoever is investing, okay, they can expect and get something from that, okay, whoever is working on that, that's our dream investing vision. And of course, this was a, a very, very subtle question, and I went into probably the wrong door, so let me, I, I've tried to, to balance my answer, sorry. I've said, no, no, because it's serious, of course, if you define everything before, then you don't need a guy afterwards. That's probably where you wanted me to go, possibly. That's not what I have said. I've said I think you need to be very, very clear on the framework. And I've also said that through the uh, board seat, there is, of course, a continuous role. Yeah? So I've, I've not, I've, I hope I've not given you the impression that I was writing off the shareholder after or just after the minute that followed the investment. Well, we're just about to the end. I think we've, we've completely exhausted the, the diehards in the audience left. Maybe we could uh, uh, just leave them with uh, maybe like your wish list. I think you've already mentioned your, your, your dream investor. Uh, but since you're kind of in different stages of the business, maybe you have a group of potential partners out here. 30 seconds from each of you on, uh, for the next stage of your business, what you'd be looking for and uh, kind of the next you know, two to three or three to five year viewpoint uh, from a capital acquisition or funding perspective. Well, as I said, we will go for the um, we'll go for a, a round in 2014 of 50 to 70 million. That could be, you know, the the, strate- the, the, the present Middle East uh, national oil company could actually be the strategic investor that, that, that goes further, or it could be an IPO. What if I may just say, Please. you know, I'm in a recycling business. Another kind of investor. Why do I like recycling? I like recycling because I think it is cost competitive, and I think it is it has an immediate impact. So I saw. Tom Van Aken in one of the uh, presentations, I think it was uh, from the gentleman from Aster, from, uh, from Aventium. So I, I, I respect bio-based polymer, but I think recycling has, has a direct impact. And why do I bring re- recycling now? That's because it does involve other investors or stakeholders, and that's each of us. So the investor is not just, if you want, the financial investor, but in the recycling business, the key, like in oil, the key is to control the feedstock. The good thing is that's a bit like a social network. Everyone controls the feedstock. So when you are in this, when you are in this business, the investor is not just the financial investor, but it's each of us that allows us, the clean tech entrepreneur in the recycling business, to actually leverage on a change of mindset that makes this world more sustainable. And that is really what allows us to make a very direct impact. So what I wish is not just the financial investor, but each of you, you give me at the end of this session, you drink now. You drink, 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 and you give me at the end of your session your empty bottle, and I'll recycle it. <laughs> Johnny, how about you? 
Uh, any any, uh, yeah. any last minute uh, thoughts or, or yeah, views in the next few years? Viewing for, for company, you? Yes. we have uh, our thumb store. We really realized this in 2010. We reinvested all the science. We have the new technology we developed. Okay, it tells us that we are going to achieve the second thumb store. Okay, in the innovation, bring the innovation to the market. Uh, self as a company, it's me. Okay, the leading investor all will be me and still me. And uh, uh, now we are looking for a round of four million to get to, to be positive to the next year, and uh, to, grow up, to grow up to forty-seven million in two thousand sixteen. Okay, so it's uh, we could do okay and keep to be self-financed. We would like to share okay the risk with others. Okay, and to find the accelerated path of growth. Okay, to achieve the second time stone. Okay, and then to start implementing uh, the third okay round of innovation in the company you really have in mind. Great. Thank you so much. Please give a warm welcome and uh, thank you.